Good morning, everyone. My name is Justin Fitzpatrick, and I serve as the Membership and Communications Manager for United Partners for Human Services, and we are so happy to have you all with us on another morning workshop that we offer for our members here today. I am joined by our Executive Director, Amber Artinen, as well as our Administrative Coordinator, Jamie Lynn Carter. Uh, LaShawn is already starting her holiday break, so she won't be with us today, but we do have her in spirit as always, um, as many of you have collaborated with her throughout the years. Uh, today, we are featuring none other than Mickey S. Moore, the founder and CEO of More Business Solutions. And his presentation today will be best practices and strategies for online giving and fundraising. This presentation will help you gain expert insights, structure and processes, strategy and best practices across the many aspects of generating contributions online for your nonprofit. This presentation is sure to be interactive, so please feel free at any time to come off mute or to ask a question in the chat, as we will try and answer them throughout the presentation as much as possible. But without further ado, I will pass off the microphone to our featured presenter of this morning, Mickey S. Moore. Wow. Justin, thank you. Uh, checks in the mail for that introduction. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> it's great to see everybody. Um, happy Thursday. And uh, it is a pleasure to be here. It's an honor to be uh, collaborating with Amber and her team. Um, and again, being a member of UPHS um, myself. So um, it's good to see you. Um, you know, first, I think I saw somebody taking a walk and listening in. I mean, that's somebody after my own heart. Um, I'm, I'm big on being outdoors. So I think it was Barbara that was taking a walk while listening. So that's commitment to online uh, fundraising for sure. So um yeah uh, again the the introduction description we're going to do the best to to meet the expectations there uh we should be done by four and then we'll um reach uh, all right I, I see some people reacting that's right thank you barbara boone i know i know you're you're listening in um no we're, we're going to get through this you know 30 to 60 minutes um it is meant to be interactive um just a couple other things though um y'all have experience in this field um, to varying degrees. So again, along the way, please participate, offer some tips and best practices, ask some good questions. Justin's going to monitor the chat. You can raise your hand, you know, use the virtual, uh, however you, you need to. Um, but we're here to hear from all of us, not just, um, not just me, right? So um, that's one thing. Uh, two, uh, the things that we're going to share today are, are relevant to your nonprofits, your boards, um, to varying degrees, right? Whether you be a, a startup nonprofit, a seasoned nonprofit, um, some with limited capital and resources, some with a lot of limit, uh, a lot of resources and capital. So keep that in mind, right? This is not these tips aren't going to work for everybody the same way, but hopefully you'll grab a few things that you can utilize at your nonprofits or with your board, your staff, your teams. Um, so let's uh, let's go to the next slide there, and we'll. Uh, We'll jump in. Um, so yeah, more business strategies. Thank you again, Justin. Um, I'm happy to be a resource for nonprofits and for-profits uh, on lanes of their business and uh, helping teams and missions get to places they've never been before. So um, also, um, I am a team member at Florida Sheriff's Association as well, overseeing all of their membership and donor relations. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about challenges, technology to strategy. Um, again, questions at the very end and throughout. Just want to make sure you know it's okay to ask questions um, and share throughout. Okay. All right, Justin. So challenges to successful online fundraising. Um, you know, we could probably come up with a few here and I can throw them out, but this is where we wanted to start with you being uh, a little participatory here uh, in the chat. Raise your hand. Just go ahead and, and say, what are those things that are top of mind for you right now that are a challenge? It could be a challenge to your success with online fundraising. Who wants to offer some of the challenges we have currently with online fundraising? I, I think there's a lot of competition out there and it's not just local. It's, you know, local, statewide, nationally, internationally, a lot of, a lot of causes that use online fundraising because they are international, national. Um, anyway, Thank the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? Jump in. Padrina in the chat said, getting lost in the abyss. 
<laughs> it can be good. A lot of noise out there, right? Mm. Okay. Aaron said maintaining the personal or heart connections uh, throughout the entire year to make the uh, make it worth the ask or the give. And then we have our first question here um, from Ann Meisel. She says, what are the best methods to use for people to pay online? I know that's something you're probably going to answer throughout the presentation. True. Yeah, the good thing is there's a lot of options, right? Um, I think the first step is ease, uh, and we'll get to that, certainly. Thank you. So, Mickey, oh. is it a challenge? Do you consider it a challenge that um, trying to figure out what your audience is and their range of skill in online donations you know being able to navigate online um so if you're if your audience is you know age range it, you have to target possibly definitely a challenge yeah certainly uh, it's one of those things where and we'll talk about communication and marketing in this as well um so let's make sure we touch on it there um you, you know how much do you need to be communicating with each demographic and which demographic is it um for us here at FSA, uh, our average age of our members is 76. <laughs> so, you know, they're a certain way with technology and print. So we have to keep that in mind. However, we want to lower that age. So we've got to do some things in a different way for different demographics. Yeah. Good. Okay. Thank you all. That's a good start to uh, some challenges and we'll keep going along the way. Um, all right. Next slide. Let's uh, jump into. Uh, big picture. This wasn't on the initial uh, setup because it, I wanted it to kind of be, um, you know, that 50,000 foot level. For in my experience, um, those nonprofits that um, consider these items have more likely to succeed across their development efforts. So, first of all, think about all your nonprofits. How many of you have a current strategic plan and you know where your organization is going? So when you communicate with your staff or your donors or your board, they understand how online fundraising fits in, uh, specifically any goals, objectives, and strategies around online fundraising. Not just to do it because everybody's doing it, but setting some goals, objectives, and strategies. Next would be a development plan, right? Is online fundraising a spoke on your development wheel? Um, how many of you have a development plan in place? And then you align your budget and resources to that development plan all the way up through your strategic plan. Again, this is big picture. A lot of times, and again, I've seen this, I've been at different nonprofits where um, crisis management a little bit from a fundraising standpoint, hey, everybody else is doing it, let's jump on this. Really not much of an overarching plan. So as some of you know that have worked with me before, I'm very much on being proactive and consistent and following a plan um, and executing it. So. Um, your budget, your resources, um, all of these things should be a consideration from a big picture standpoint. Everybody, does that make sense? So, okay. Uh, so pull back, think about your strategic plan, your objectives and goals and strategies when it comes to online fundraising. All right, next slide. Thank you, Justin. So let's talk technology first, all right? Um, as you know, with these slides and these virtual discussions, you can really get in the weeds a lot on these. So I'm gonna try not to get too deep because again, we told you we'd be done by two. Just kidding, All right? So um, obviously website, right? Um, and we'll talk about some details in a minute on strategies and tips around your website, but you're gonna involve your website. Is it up to date? Is it current? Is it a little on the older side? Your CRM, what are you using to manage your data? Uh, your donor relationships? Um, is it mobile ready, your website? We're going to talk a little bit about forms and templates, right? Uh, your donation form that you're using uh, for online or uh, building list. Are you working from list? Are you segmenting your donors? And that way you can use them in your approach with online fundraising. Uh, email integration. So, you know, again, how often are you emailing through your database? How are you managing your emails? Are you using outside software? Um, and then lastly, analytics. Are you measuring, right? Organizational management, you know, setting goals and strategies, but having KPIs and analytics to help you measure that success or lack thereof. 
and then adjust what you're doing. So technology is going to have to play a part. Now, remember in that last uh, first one I showed you, the slide talks about resources. These are key resources to have in your budget, in your plan to be successful for online fundraising. That makes sense. Thumbs up or we move. Okay. Good stuff. All right. Next slide. So let's talk about setting the strategy. And this is where, again, all of you have experience to some degree when it comes to online fundraising. So please raise your hand, throw in a comment uh, in the chat, offer any kind of suggestions um, if you'd like, because we're all here to help each other. Um, I'm just the one that they've asked to talk mostly about it. <laughs> so let's help each other. All right. So um, in my experience, online fundraising is an entry point on the spoke uh, on the fundraising wheel, right? So it is a spoke on the wheel. Everybody should have a way for people to give to you online. It is primarily an entry point, right? It is key to what you do with it after that. And that's my takeaway here. Once you have this set up, what are you going to do with those folks post gift? You know, if they make that first $25 gift, what are we doing after that? And I know Alice Lee is on here, right? We always talk about retention and those things. Uh, annual appeals are an entry point. So it's digital entry point. You got print entry points, spoke on the wheel. Is it in your plan? What are you doing with those folks after they make their first gifts? Uh, communication and marketing plan. So your online fundraising uh, should always lay across uh, matrix, if you will, with your communication and marketing plan. This is where consistency and proactive comes in. Um, you know, it's one thing to have a donate button on your website, but if we're not periodically consistently telling folks that it's there and that they can give via that instrument, uh, then you're just hoping they find you in the abyss or in the noise, right? So always crossing and planning with the communications and marketing team um, that you may have internal or external, which is the next bullet point there. Again, depending on the size of your nonprofit, I remember when we were at Southern Scholarship Foundation in the early days, I was doing a lot of the Facebook posts and I was doing a lot of those things with different team members. It was not the best way to do it, but we had to create capital eventually to hire someone for that very position. So keep in mind when you're doing fundraising, online fundraising and utilizing some of these tips, you may have an external partner that can help you do these things or specifically somebody on the inside to do it. We talk about resources. Um, you know, you've got to have somebody tend to this process. This would not be as successful if it's set it and forget it. Somebody's got to own it uh, and make sure it's consistent and proactive. Again, because there's an abyss and there's a lot of competition to Barbara's point and there's a lot of noise out there. You've got to be consistent. Um, donations on the website, right? So uh, I'm sure all of you probably have that donate page there. Um, the best tips I can give you there, they say on average, nonprofits require four steps, require folks four steps to uh, to make a gift. You can get that down to, to three. That That's considered easy, okay? Uh, integration, branding, all of that on that page, um, embedded the form on the website, um, those are my primary takeaways, right? Make it easy. Make sure it integrates to your CRM so there's an easy flow. Um, and then take advantage of matching opportunities. How many of you have heard of Florida Sheriff's Youth Ranch? Anybody, right? So um, they just sent an email out last week. Um, they had a donor that said, any gifts you receive from November 15th to December 31st will match any online gifts. So in their online email they sent this week, that was their story. Double the love is what they're calling it. But again, matching opportunities are wonderful. Uh, it's a great takeaway for uh, digital online fundraising. Um, and then also on the website, your online fundraising, do you allow for memorial or honorary gifts, uh, tribute gifts? Um, it's, a, it's a unique thing to offer. CRM, some of them uh, have it built in, most do. Uh, but consider that because that's a personal connection. Um, the only catch there on the other end is make sure you're sending the acknowledgement, right? So if somebody says it's in honor of, make sure you're sending the other folks that. You got to build out those uh, fields 
if you will, in your form to make sure you're capturing the acknowledgement, name, and address. The last thing you want to do is take the gift and not send that letter to Ms. Jones uh, that somebody made a gift in her honor. Okay? So, spoke on the wheels, the entry point, communication, and marketing plan. Make sure these things are all working together. Think about your internal and external resources to be consistent and proactive. Um, donations on the website, make it easy. Integrate to your CRM. Make sure it's branding and it's clear. It's about you. Keep it clean, crisp. Matching opportunities and tributes. Before we go to the next slide, any comments on these sections and these bullets? Anybody else have anything to add or ask about? Yes, uh, thanks, Alice Lee. Double the love is a clever theme for a matching campaign, online or otherwise. Agreed, yeah. Uh, again, best practices, leverage what you can that you see someone's doing that may work well. Good stuff. Um, uh, Valentine's Day, there you go. Okay, next slide, thank you. Okay, so setting the strategy, um, let's continue a little bit about uh, some of those tips and, and best practice from an online fundraising standpoint. So recurring program um, and creating some giving societies. How many of, again, short show of hands that I can see, how many of you have an established recurring gift program now? Okay. So um, again, y'all have heard the word sustainability, right? How do we build long-term sustainable relationships? You know, creating a recurring online gift program is one way to get folks in there. Now, if they set it and forget it, that's good, right? If they can give you 25 bucks a month and they set it. Um, but creating a giving society along with it um, can increase retention, of course, uh, the recognition part of that. And if you can get folks to give you 25 a month, you multiply that by 12, that's a committed donor, right? So then what are we doing about stewarding those and moving to a different giving society? Um, so one example I'll, I'll share at Southern Scholarship Foundation, we created the uh, Young Philanthropist Society while I was there. So as you know, it was trying to get our uh, youthful alumni uh, to sign up and give to the organization. So those giving levels online, recurring, started as low as $5 a month, uh, went up to, I think, 25 or 35 a month. Um, and, you know, spelled out how we would recognize them. Uh, I think in one graphic, we used a, a, coffee, a Starbucks coffee, you know, $5, join $5 a month, skip one coffee a month. Um, and we were, you know, worked out really well. It was all online. And um, I don't know how many young philanthropists they have, but point is, I would, I'd be willing to bet a lot of them have then transitioned to pledge donors or major gift donors as they progressed in their careers and their lives. So uh, recurring programs, setting up sustainable gifts and entry point, and then future stewardship cultivation for larger gifts. Okay. Um, social. So again, I, I'm you could probably Google a thousand best practices for how to use Facebook and Instagram, um, but specifically asking if you and your nonprofit have applied for the Facebook uh, tools, the fundraising tools, right? They've, they've changed it uh, recently, but um, it's tied more to PayPal. I think in the original days, if I remember with Facebook, you know, it's straight from them, right? I mean, it was just a direct funding process. Now, they partner with uh, PayPal, so and most everybody gets a little piece of something, right? And there are challenges, as you know, with with Facebook and Instagram. You may not get all the information you need about all the donors that give, but the point is, you can still participate in Facebook, uh, Instagram, to bring support to your organization. To someone's point earlier, audience, I think Barbara mentioned. Again, if you're trying to engage various audiences then consider participating in different technologies to do this. If it's a part of your plan and you have the resources to do it consistently and proactively, because of the noise that's out there, you've got to be doing it consistently. Okay, so um, check out the FB uh, fundraising tools application, follow that process. 
Again, that's if you want to, if you find it beneficial for your organization to do it, it's there. Um, crowdfunding and peer-to-peer, -peer, and you, you've heard these terms for a long time, um, they do work. Again, recognizing the challenges around that if you've got an internal resource who can do the crowdfunding project, uh, my tip there, I, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of tangible projects and things that people can get behind from a crowdfunding standpoint. Uh, also peer to peer, uh, less so than just, hey, we need some operational funds. Let's do a crowdfunding, right? Give me something specific as a donor that I can really make an impact on. Um, so uh, crowdfunding works well. Um, I'm a big fan of letting others uh, or work smarter, not harder. So crowdfunding, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, if you can get other minions out there bringing support to your organization, by all means, right? Let's do that. Uh, cause days. Does anybody know when Giving Tuesday is? I don't know. It's Is it coming up? Maybe something? November 28th. Yeah, yeah, yes. So yeah, look, um, so cause days. Uh, again, there are a lot of causes we can tie ourselves to as a nonprofit. Um, again, look at your mission. Look at your strategic plan. How does it fit? There's Earth Days. Well, if your mission's aligned with Earth Day, that may be a cause day. You want to build something around. Giving Tuesday, obviously, any nonprofit can play in Giving Tuesday. Um, my tips there, and, and I'm sure, again, y'all have done this for many years with Giving Tuesday. It's about a plan, and it's about seeding, and it's about being early in the process, in my opinion, uh, to increase your, your opportunity for success, right? So what fields, what technology, what mediums are we going to participate in? What segments of our donor base are we going to speak to? What stories are we going to tell? Cross it with your communications and marketing plan. Yes, using the hashtag is part of it, but you've got to seed it, right? Um, how many of you get the emails every week uh, with giving Tuesday updates and toolkits? Are y'all getting those, all right? Uh, I mean, that's perfect, right? They start sending them, I think, six months ago. But that's where Giving Tuesday and a lot of these will work for you is by being proactive, by being consistent, but seeding the process. Similar to, as I'm sure Alice Lee will tell you, when it comes to plan giving, you talk about a seeding process, plan giving is certainly a seeding process. Uh, giving Tuesday can be a much shorter turnaround on that effort, um, but it does take seating. Uh, lastly, as well, uh, tangible works. Again, uh, it's like your annual appeal letters. Giving Tuesday is kind of a, a, a digital annual appeal that we go through every year. I like, as a donor myself personally, I like to see where there's tangible ways my contribution on Giving Tuesday can make a difference. People can give today for Giving Tuesday. They don't have to wait to Tuesday but I like the tangible piece. So consider that, whether it be a renovation, whether it be a new vehicle for your nonprofit, but something that I can see, touch, and feel where I'm making a difference. Okay. Um, the last bullet here, thank you to donors. Uh, again, we could do a session on donor recognition across the board. That's how important it is. Um, people give for a lot of different reasons, but usually it's tied to you know, their heart strings, right? The empathy for your cause. That's where the connection comes from. Um, how are we thinking our folks online? Is it simply, and I've gotten these. How many of you have gotten a receipt email from a nonprofit and it's the transaction stuff, right? There's like an invoice number and it just says, here you go. And that's it. So I myself not touched by that too much. So I may not give to them again. Um, so whatever you choose to do online, Set up your thank yous to be distinctive, unique, memorable, um, and personable if you can. A lot of what we're doing these days is personable uh, on the front end, but we got to do it on the back end too. So um, sharing impact in your thank you notes or your emails, uh, sharing some pictures, videos, um, and even testimonials so people get a little more than just, here's your receipt, okay? And, you know, why not even drive them back to maybe other ways to give or the content and copy in that letter too? Um, you know, try to avoid the, on behalf of, thank you for making an online donation. Your 
support today made a difference in the lives of our youth at the youth ranch, right? Hear directly from Steve and how much this has impacted his life living at this house in Live Oak, blah, blah, blah. But you get the point. That goes a long way. Um, now, that does take time and energy and resources, people to create the content, to set it up. Um, how are you tracking it? How is it integrating with your CRM as well? Um, all of those things, you got to be able to capture it. Um, somebody earlier talked about how do we make that connection? Totally get it, right? Um, online annual appeals, they're in your system. Hopefully you're getting thousands of those donations every year through your annual appeal or online. That's where we go back to list. At some way, segmenting your donor list by annual gifts and then coming up with a plan and how they're being communicated with throughout the year. It's not always about, hey, let's talk to them two weeks before Giving Tuesday or two weeks before our event, if I just throw that in there. But it's year long. What are we doing to cultivate, steward, communicate, connect, right? Um, some of you may have heard me use the terms connectivity and participation. Connectivity is all day, every day. It's 24-7. What are we doing to connect with our donors? And then are they aware of all the various ways they can participate in our mission? Whether it be online giving or plan giving or volunteering or serving on the board. That to me has always been my goal uh, when I was in the nonprofit space, uh, and it is now helping nonprofits, is helping you connect and participate with donors, board members, partners, et cetera, all right, to fulfill your mission. Um, okay, so recurring, establishing some giving societies with some donor recognition around that. Uh, social, utilizing Facebook, Instagram tools, recognize the positives there, but also the challenges. Crowdfunding, peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, cause days, aligned with your mission, uh, seed it, be proactive and consistent, but do it early. Uh, think of tangible ways uh, to garner the support on those cause days. Uh, and then lastly, be unique and distinctive in how you're thanking your donors in the digital space, um, you know, with pictures, with videos impact, KPIs, measurables, all of those things that tell me my investment was more than just a transaction, right? It's relational, it's not transactional. Easier said than done. Uh, it does take time, energy, and resources. Okay. Any Real questions? Quick. On, yeah. Real quick, um, Alice Lee put in the chat, she concurred, you know, the better the thank you, the better chance the donor will give again. Um, but Barbara Boone had asked specifically, do you have an example of a crowdfunding type project? Like, what would that look like? Yeah, sure. Um, thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Alice Lee. Yeah. Um, yeah, crowdfunding, you know, again, from a tangible perspective, could be a renovation project. Um, it could be uh, a resource that you need, whether it be, you know, again, a company vehicle, um, you know, it, could you do, hey, we want to establish an endowment, you know, potentially. But, but again, I lean more toward those crowdfunding projects. Uh, you can almost say campaigns, right? That's another spoke on the fundraising wheel in your development plan or campaigns, right? Um, again, fundraising to me is a campaign that's 24-7. All day, every day, I was fundraising for our cause to me. Um, but campaigns can be beneficial Again, if you do your feasibility consideration, uh, you plan it and you execute it. Um, and the most successful campaigns I've seen are for specific items and reasons. Um, what are your thoughts about people just um, doing a GoFundMe, you know, without, without not, I'm going to say without permission, but, um, you know, having the best of intentions to say, oh, I'm just throw out a GoFundMe, GoFundMe for XYZ. Um, I'm all about strategically planning that and making sure that it's the right time for that. But sure. I didn't know if anybody else on the call had some GoFunding, GoFundMe stories about, because I, I have one where someone did that and it was, a, I, I was a little bit surprised, but certainly didn't want to not, I didn't want to publicly say, take it down. <laughs> so. Anyway, I didn't know what your thoughts are on, on about, a, about a GoFundMe, maybe a rogue GoFundMe opportunity. 
So, um, Barbara, great point, right? And I think everybody here on this call, you know, there's some good things about GoFundMe and there's probably some challenging things about GoFundMe, right? So in my experience, when I was in ED and we have a potential, maybe a board member or a partner of ours offer, hey, why don't we do a GoFundMe? Um, if you've got a plan in place for your online fundraising, if you got a strategic plan, you got a development plan, you have your spokes identified, a great answer is, you know what, thank you for that suggestion. Let me get with the team and see how it fits in our plan, right? See see how it fits in our marketing and communications plan, and we'll get back to you. And the staff will come back with a recommendation. Uh, and I think that's your opportunity to strategically discuss it. And if you then control the narrative, then it can work to your favor because you know the pros and cons with uh, GoFundMe, right? Uh, you get limited information about the donors and all those things. But there are crises, and GoFundMe is there to help people. I've seen tons of success stories. So I think that's where it's important you have a plan because you can lean back into that plan. How does it fit in our mission? How does it fit in our budget? And then make your staff recommendation. That's how I would suggest using it, but I'm happy to have anybody else share anything about that. I would I would just add... Um... And some organizations that I've served on the board for, we've had to actually institute a third party fundraising policy with guidelines about what we would support and what we wouldn't, so that when those one offs would happen with good intention, of course, we had a pathway to say, we don't we don't support this and this is why. Um, so I would I would encourage looking at implementing something formal as well if you find that it's it's something that is happening more and more and doesn't directly align with what you all are doing as an organization. Yeah, well said. Thank you, Amber. A thousand percent. That third party fundraising now is is another spoke on the wheel, right? It's a it's a wonderful thing that folks will come to you and say, hey, I'd love to do the you remember when birthday fundraising first started off, right? Uh, in Facebook, right? Um, it's kind of faded a little bit, but it's similar to that. We're fortunate we have outsiders that want to fundraise for us, right? For our nonprofit. But how do we maintain a little control on what they're saying and branding and mission and all of that? So third-party fundraising, great suggestion. Have that as part of your gift acceptance policy so it can detail the understanding of what can be done or can't be done. Good point. Anybody else have questions, comments uh, regarding these bullet points or before we get to general questions and suggestions because um, we love this participatory back and forth. Anybody else? I have a question about um, thank you notes and whether or not they should be always be um, snail mail, whether it's okay occasionally or depending on the amount to have a receipt and an email thank you and if there should be a little gift involved in the um you know thank you that's you where you actually mail something should it be a card a letter what's the best way to to do that that people are going to feel really good about receiving awesome thank you ann yeah you know i think all of that's a consideration so uh, when i think a big picture first is are we segmenting our donors first so what I mean by that is there are key donors, right? And then there are a certain level donor, a certain level donor. So that's my first step that would then drive uh, some of the donor recognition that you can do. Now, first off, everybody gets a thank you, right? They have to. They got to get something that says, thank you for giving. Here's your receipt and all that good stuff. But beyond that, uh, digitally or print um, is where you could do some additional things to either recognize donors at different levels, but also save your team time and energy. So for right now, example here, um, you know, we're blessed. We have 100,000 members. And in one day in our renewal email that we sent out on September 22nd, we got $15,000 in additional donations in one day on top of their memberships. Now, those that made additional donations and membership online, they got a an email right away, right? they're not gonna get a donation statement mailed to them as well. They chose to do it online. I'm gonna communicate with them online. Anybody who mails this check, we do the paper. So we're saving some resources, right? We're trying to be good stewards. But I also have a dashboard every day that I can look at that says top donors. And anybody that makes a gift $500 or more, I either email them personally or I write them a personal handout. 
And that's something I see every day. So that's an example. So again, to bring it back in, yes, be unique, be different, right? But segment your donors so everybody understands. The next step is the plan on donor recognition across those segments, but use digital and print. Use okay. video, use whatever that you can do to make it memorable. And as Alice Lee said earlier, the better your thank yous, the more likely folks come back around and give again. It definitely impacts that. Thank, thank you. you, that's helpful. Yeah. Anybody else, any other questions before I start calling people's names? Because I see the names. I mean, I can just start pulling people in and, you know, uh, or not. I mean, I don't always do that. Sonia, five weeks. Let's go. You've got lots of questions, right? No? <laughs> Had to. I learned a long time ago. God gave me two ears and one mouth. I need to do more listening than talking. So at this point in, in phase in the game, I'm just trying to soak it all in. Um, um, and I'm, I am I want to participate. We definitely didn't need to do more outreach and fundraising. I'm working with our grant writer on that. Uh, we already have a platform in place. It seems a bit complicated and convoluted. It's set certainly more than three steps. Uh, so we're working through that process now. Um, but I'm taking everything in that everybody's saying. So thank you very much. Of course. Yeah. We wish you the best there. Um, and again, keep in mind all of us that in different places in our nonprofit resources at different levels, team size at different levels. So um, take what you can. It's just if you decide to have online fundraising as part of your development plan and effort, you've got you've got to schedule it out. You got to cross it with communications. Um, you got to be consistent and proactive. The resources behind it are super important. Try your best to avoid the the crisis management of online fundraising if you can. Um, and it'll work. I, I was just grateful yesterday we were able to. I was just really grateful yesterday we stood up our Facebook page because it had been down. So mm -hmm. I understand the importance of consistency because we're doing a lot of great work here but we're not communicating it um, but we we've regained access to instagram and facebook so um we're a little bit behind the wheel but we'll we'll definitely get on track and catch up there you go thank you i just saw somebody made a comment thank i think you. about qr codes right uh so yeah uh qr codes uh, again, if you're talking about technology for different folks, if, if you're trying to engage various audiences, um, I don't have it in front of me, but just this morning, uh, I did our final proof of our second annual, um, second notice for our annual renewal. Um, it is a mailed piece, but we have QR codes on the piece for multiple reasons. Um, one for the audience, but also for us here, we have a, a different QR code for when it comes back to us, the volume of 100,000. Uh, we use scanners, so we're saving time and energy on both sides, right? So we're, we're having little barcodes, QR codes for purposes of increasing participation on a different demographic, but also saving time and energy for our team members in processing a lot of those donations. Yeah, good question. Anything else, Justin? Hey, Mickey, Mickey, could you walk us through the, the staff end of the QR code? I get the the audience using the QR code to pay or donate. What Tell us about your end. Sure, yeah. And, and, and again, I am not our IT specialist, but I do know enough that our CRM and our scanners, right? So we have the handheld scanners where we can scan those 2D um squares, you, you probably see them similar to QR codes, uh, where we scan and it automatically pulls up the profile in the CRM. So we don't have to search them. We don't have to find them by uh, member number, name, address. It's automatically attached to that specific mailer that they received. Does that make sense? Yeah, thanks. So you're saying that either if they mail it back with a check or something like that, or if they You've got it on your end such that when the, when it comes in, you use it so that you don't have to uh, manually scan. Correct. 
right. paper. You don't have to scan some a piece of paper. Yeah, we're, we're just talking about being more efficient, right? It, it's just an efficiency thing on our end, correct? And identifying who the donor is. Yes, ma'am. Yep. I, I feel terrible because I, this is a timely workshop for me, and we had a fundraiser last night, and I feel like I'm monopolizing, and I'm really not that person, everybody. I'm really not. It's just this has been great. We had a fundraiser last night. It was raining. It was a guest bartending. Those are wildly successful for us. They're just easy. You don't have to, people aren't, don't have to register and all the things. And, you know, if you get a great um, a vendor to use, we were at Township in College Town, and you could imagine. Anyway, so it was raining, and one of my board members said, you know, we should have had a QR code so that people who didn't want to come out in the rain could still give a bartender a tip that was the that was the activity was you know tip tip the bartenders and while we did well we didn't do as well because of attendance people didn't want to come out in the rain and a bazillion things were happening last night but i thought that was a great outcome of what so that next time you know if you can't attend you can still tip somebody and and a tip is nominal you know 10 25 dollars versus um some other donation um, so I thought that was an awesome outcome. We have a have a new vehicle so that we can circumvent weather. <laughs> yes, yeah. Barbara, thank you for sharing. And listen, I, again, as a recovering executive director, right? Still, um, it's hard for us as EDs or development officers to think of every opportunity by which we can generate support. We, we can't think of everything, but again, that's why we have partners like board members. That's why we have other folks to give us these ideas. So I think it's awesome. Now you know you'll you'll set that in the plan for next year in your debrief. You'll you'll mention it, and when you come back around next year for your next bartender event, uh, you'll have a QR code on the on the post on Facebook, or you'll have a, a poster you can hand out there at the event, right? A little postcard that has the QR code on it. So, yeah, it, that's that's what they're supposed to do is to help you be better at what you're doing. You can't think of everything, Barbara. Give yourself grace. <laughs> uh let's see anything else before we we still have four hours left so we got all day um just kidding uh let's see are we talking about donations i think we're good justin do you have anything else we're at 44 minutes so i don't see anything in the chat okay okay um so yeah let me just close it by saying um you know, continue doing your best. Uh, I am a planner at heart. I think y'all know that. Um, but having a plan is is important, but you got to execute it. So whether it be capital, whether it be resources and people, we can talk about plans all day, but it comes down to execution proactively and consistently. Online fundraising is one spoke on the wheel. So look at the organization, figure out how it fits on your wheel and make sure you've got the resources to be successful. If you don't, pause the plan. Don't execute it if you don't have the resources because of the abyss and some of the challenges we've talked about today. Uh, but thank you again, Justin, Amber, and the rest of the team, Jamie Lynn, uh, LaShawn, even though you're on vacation, having a good time. Um, thank you all for participating. Um, I'm here. You can always shoot me an email if you have a question. Hit me on LinkedIn, wherever. Um, I'm happy to help anybody. Thank you all. Bye. Oh, oh, is that sorry? Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say somebody had a question. No, I think they were just. Hey, oh. hey, yes, yes, sir. I got a question for the guy. Um, yes, sir, Tom. I have. I want to just ask him. How do you go about uh not feeling guilty asking people for a large amount of money? Ooh, Tim, that's a long answer. So we will be here till four. No, um, you know, Tim, so uh, I've, I've said this in small crowds, big crowds. Um, rarely do I uh, ask people for money directly. Now, I don't know if Alice Lee's rolling her eyes at me right now or not, but let me finish that statement, right? So um, in building those relationships um, by asking a lot of good questions and cultivating and stewarding folks, um, you kind of get an idea of where their interests are. Um, let them know the ways they can participate. 
Um, unless you're doing something very direct in a campaign and very tangible, I tend not to mention the dollar amount unless the donor says, how much do you need, right? Um, because if I build the spokes and the structure and process of a pledge society, plan giving society, those things will help the donor understand the levels. Um, but I use the language commensurate a lot. You know, Mr. Jones, thank you for the time in the last six months. Your participation will make a difference here, commensurate to your financial situation. Just know we value your participation, whatever it may be. And then Mr. Jones says, well, Mickey, just tell me, man, how much money do you need? I say, well, based on your interest that you've shared with me, um, $5,000 would make a significant difference in our campaign. Then that's when I would bring it up. But honestly, over the years, I've helped get people to a place where they want to give. They decide how much, as long as we've expressed to them the difference they can make. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, uh, you know, I've been asked several times, like, well, Tim, how much, uh, what do you need? Mm -hmm. And my response will be like, uh, ma'am, sir, whatever your heart desires to give, I have no specific amount at hand, but whatever your heart decides to give, uh, whether it's two, $2, 200 300 I don't know. But I put it in, in in their hands, and I just yeah. I don't know. Well, so Tim, there's a couple things there, right? Again, if somebody says, "How much do you need?" and if you've learned what their interests are in your program, um, then you you probably have needs list, right? Either on your website or in your mind that you know you need some help with. Then you know you can throw out some dollars. Um, I'm not afraid to mention dollar figures, but I love telling them it's all commensurate to their situation and everything adds up and it's participatory. But here's our pledge society levels. First level is 5,000 a year. Next level is 10,000. Well, now they're learning about how much dollars, you know, it would take for them to be in the pledge society, right? Um, but let me say this. Um, also, donor research, right? Folks at FSU Foundation, they could probably push a button. They have resources. They could tell them how many alumni in their database could write a check for $50,000, right? I don't know how many of you here on the screen have those types of resources or marketing relationships where you can push those buttons and find out. That can, that can help. Now, can you look at Zillow? Can you look at you know other stuff and try to find a picture of their house and figure out how much money they may have? I mean, you could try to do all that. I don't. Because in, in my experience, cultivating and stewarding and asking good questions and listening and helping them get to a place of giving, that's better time spent than hoping you know their financial situation. Because the big house doesn't mean they got money in the bank, right? It doesn't. So I, that's why I try to stay on the relational side versus throwing money. So sorry, yes, like sir. We, we could be here for two hours talking about that question. That's a great question. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate the answer. Um, yeah, no worries. No worries. Anybody else? Justin, I'll throw it back to you if you want to do the wrap or Amber or whoever. Perfect. Uh, well, thank you all for joining us this morning for this incredible workshop. Uh, again, talking through resources, tools, and all the light that you can utilize for your online giving and fundraising programs as you're starting the development, uh, whether it be for Giving Tuesday this upcoming Tuesday after Thanksgiving or for 2024 and beyond. Uh, the biggest thing that I want to share with you, and I'll share my screen really quickly because I don't want to hold you over, is next week. So not next week, the week after next, excuse me after Thanksgiving on the 28th, which is Giving Tuesday, we'll be hosting our Creating a Culture of Thankfulness workshop. We'll be featuring Rolanda Johnson of Choosing Me Unselfishly, and we'll be discussing practical strategies and tangible benefits of prioritizing gratitude, both internally and externally, as we navigate the unique field of nonprofit work, right? And we want to make sure that we get this out to all of you as we'll be having the Thanksgiving holiday next week. And a lot of you will be out of office. A lot of you will be enjoying your time with your families and friends. And also to close this uh, workshop out before I hand it back to Mickey, uh, we do want to wish you all, if we don't see you again, a happy Thanksgiving and that you all be safe throughout this holiday season as we're starting to uh, crank into those holiday uh, celebrations. Please be safe and please, please, please have a great time with each of your families. Mickey, I'll pass it on back to you. Thank you. We wanted to close this with a little strategic, y'all done SWATs. You've heard of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So uh, here's a couple 
questions to consider uh, as you take your next step in online fundraising. Share it with your board, your development staff. Uh, these are a couple of good questions to bring things to light. Uh, where are we when it comes to online fundraising? So grab that before he closes it out, copy and paste it. And um, y'all have a great Thanksgiving. Thank you very much.